Each electron in an atom can be described by a set of four quantum numbers. That's what they're called. And uh, the Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of quantum numbers. So what all this means is that each electron has its own address, if you will. And it's specific to that electron in that atom. Okay, now, here are the four quantum numbers. The first one's called the principal quantum number, and it's just like the ones we've seen before where n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. That relates to the size and the energy of something we call the orbital. Now, the orbital isn't uh, uh, electrons orbiting the nucleus, but it's a confinement area or a space where we can find an electron. Doing what? Doing something at any given time. So that's the principal quantum number. The second one is called the angular momentum quantum number. It used to be called azimuthal. Now, the angular momentum quantum number just describes, if you take the orbital, it describes the shape of the orbital. Orbitals can have different shapes. So then there's the third one, and that's called the magnetic quantum number. Now, the magnetic number just describes the orientation of that orbital in three-dimensional space. And then comes the last set of quantum numbers called the electron spin number, or the spin number. And all that describes is that there are two electrons that can be present in a given suborbital, that's what the magnetic number gives us, a suborbital, at any given time. Two electrons only in an orbital. Now, what that means is that one electron it is believed anyway, and this is kind of broken down real simply, is that one electron might be spinning one way with a negative charge and another one spinning another way with a negative charge. That creates a kind of a magnetic field that allows them to stay in one confinement space at any given time. But you can't have three electrons in that space, you can have one or two. One spinning this way, one spinning this way. Try that. <laughs> That's not easy. Okay, so let's look at hydrogen because it only has one electron, and try to figure out where its, its electron is in terms of its address. Okay, now, hydrogen's element number one. Okay, the principal quantum number, n equals one, will describe the orbital that it's in. Now, L is that angular momentum number, and it has allowable numbers only from zero to n minus one, and they have to be numbers or uh, whole numbers that go from 0 on. But since L can only go from 0 here to n minus 1, well n minus 1 is 0, so L can only go to 0 when n equals 1. So n equals 1, L equals 0. Now ML can have a range of allowable integers from negative L to positive L. But since L is 0, well then ML can only be 0. We'll expand on this after we get to more complicated atoms other than hydrogen and helium. But the spin number, always plus one half or negative one half, that's one electron, that's another electron. That's how we just call it, plus one half and negative one half, that describes each electron. So where is hydrogen's, uh, what is hydrogen's electrons set of quantum numbers? It's, well, there's n equals one is where that electron is, and L equals zero, and ML equals zero, and then we can just defer to the plus one half. And so the set of quantum numbers that describes hydrogen electron is one, zero, zero, plus one half for each of these quantum numbers. Now, look at helium. Helium's got two electrons. So where are those two electrons? Both of them are going to be at n equals 1 because both of them can fit in that orbital. So one electron has the quantum number set 1, 0, 0, plus 1 half, and the other electron has 1, 0, 0, negative 1 half. Okay, now let's go on to a little bit more complicated atoms and I'll show you what the next allowable set of quantum numbers are.